How has and is the VW scandal affecting London? I think in terms of confidence in the uh, actual share price of VW, um, uh, I think it will have a short-term impact. Uh, those of us that have pension funds um, invest in global equities. VW is obviously listed on the bo uh, Deutsche Börse, so I think from that perspective it might have an impact on investors. Um, in terms of market confidence, I think in the short term there might be an immediate hit, but I think longer term the brand's too big for it to be really substantial. Will prices of cars tumble and will this affect businesses? No, I don't think prices of cars, new cars, will tumble, absolutely not. Um, I think there might be a knock-on effect to the consumer in terms of having to take their car back to their dealer for the dealer to then send it back to be, re to be sorted. Um, there might be a knock-on effect on second-hand cars, absolutely, because um, you know the value of cars dips as soon as you drive it off the forecourt. I mean, you've got something like this, it will affect the price overall. But in terms of new cars, absolutely not. I don't think longer terms can have any impact. VW Group's board members initially claimed not to have any knowledge of this cheat software. Do you think this is plausible or acceptable? Um, well, considering that they've admitted that um, they did um, uh, falsify uh, their cars, um, that's pretty unacceptable. Um, in the UK, um, the chief executive would probably have gone out in about two days, he would have gone. Um, in Germany, it was protracted over a week. Um, I think that says a lot about the two-tier board system in Germany. I think it also says a lot about the involvement and the dominance of the Porsche family in VW. Um, I think basically they took their eye off the ball, and you know that you know for that excuse is is pretty unacceptable. This discovery will have a knock-on effect for the rest of the car industry, as evidence of other manufacturers is likely to emerge. How will this affect the car industry? I think those diesel cars, uh, especially those that are made in Germany, um, it may do in the short term, absolutely. Uh, but you know, people need cars, they have to buy a car. Some people need it to get to work, to take the kids to school, um, to carry out errands, and so I don't think it will do. Reputationally, um, absolutely, I think the, car, the whole car industry is going to take a short term hit. But again, because of those factors I've just described, I cannot imagine for a second that's going to have a long term impact. No investigation has been commenced by the UK yet, but is this just a matter of time? Especially now that the VW Group has admitted to rigging cars. Yeah, that changes things slightly. Um, it would not surprise me if um, the Department for Transport launched an investigation of some description. Um, but I think most of the uh, um, reputational and litigation damage is going to be done in the States, uh, probably at the European Commission level. Um, I, I think VW just need to just take it on the chin, apologise and move on as quickly as possible. Unfortunately, part of that moving on is going to mean paying large fines at some point. Who is this scandal hitting the hardest? Um, I think it's probably impacting um, uh, shareholders immediately, absolutely. Um, I think especially those that invest directly in VW shares in Germany. Um, you know, I think it's fair to say that those of us that drive VWs might be treated a little like lepers for a short term uh, period of time. Um, but I think, again, longer term, we're talking about a global brand that, you know, only last year I think produced its 10 millionth golf. Um, you know, it's just a massive brand, and I think they will get over this eventually. How has this scandal affected the public? Well, you know, what consumers tend to do when there's a big knock-on effect of the brand is they move away to an alternative brand. The problem I think you have with VW is because it owns so many brands, like Audi, which is a very expensive car, you know, driven by very, you know, wealthy individuals. Um, and they also own Skoda, um, they own a number of other big car manufacturers. It's, the problem is, who do you move away to? You know, Audi, Audi customers might move to BMW, but again, I think this will only be a short-term thing. You know, it's a bit like, I suppose, um, you know, your watch brand. You know, some people like Rolex and they'll wear Rolex forever and ever and ever, regardless of what happens to Rolex. Some people will wear Amiga regardless of whatever Amiga does. You know, you're just into two camps. And I think, I think, I just think the brand is so big, I don't think longer term it's going to have any material impact. Immediately, absolutely. The share price is effectively half, but I, I, it, is, it is too big. I'm not necessarily too big to fail. I don't think anybody's too big to fail, but I do think it's big enough to sustain these kind of knocks. In terms of gaining back public trust, was owning up to the rigging of emissions tests and offering free refitting to its customers the way to go for the VW group? Yeah, I think, I think that's the right thing to do. 
Um, I think that will give assurances to the public. It's still an inconvenience. You know, whenever you have to take a product back, it's an inconvenience. And you just hope that when you have to do that, especially when you've got to physically get in a car and drive it all the way to your dealership, you know, that is an inconvenience. We've all got busy lives. Uh, but hopefully the dealers will uh, mediate that and ensure that it's not too inconvenient, that the car's not away for too long. Uh, I'm sure they're thinking about that right now, absolutely. Do you think this will help VW's reputation? I think it does. I think the one, th- the one thing I would have done if I was advising them from a corporate governance and or reputational standpoint is for uh, Martin Winterfell to have actually apologised immediately, with, immediately, to have said, fezzed up and said, you know what, we made a mistake, I'm really, really sorry, this is disgraceful, I'm going to launch an internal investigation, I'm going to sort this out immediately. Instead, it was, you know, they knew about it for a while, then the, um, the authorities in America announced it, then they kind of admitted it, they didn't tell shareholders, the share price dropped. It was just managed really badly from a corporate governance standpoint, and the knock-on effect of that is, is, is impact on its reputation. So could you tell me about the IOD's Good Governance Index? The Good Governance Index is effectively a way to measure corporate governance and what it attempts to do is measure governance in two ways, through perceptions, i.e. you or I's opinion on what company we of a company and what we think of their corporate governance, which I think is very, very important. Um, I mean, we're sat in a, a coffee shop, you know, as far as I'm concerned, prices are reasonable, staff seem happy, it's efficient, so my perception is it's a well-run company. I think that's really, really important. The, um, so the second way to measure it is through objective factors, which is effectively readily available information in the marketplace. For example, do they have a separate CEO and chairman, um, dividend to bonus payouts, um, diversity issues, those kind of issues, those kind of factors that you can physically pull from the stock exchange or wherever and make an assessment. Uh, and that's the way to that's the way we're measuring it. And what we do is we we then put them in a in a table and we try and rank them um, from tier to tier. Um, and their scores are averaged through the objective factors and the scores are then averaged through the perception or perception audit. Um, but it is quite possible to come bottom hypothetically of the perception table, but actually the reality, the objective factors, you might actually be in the top table. This is one of the things we're seeing with banks. The perception of banks is that they're appallingly run. People hate, you know, don't like banks at the moment. Uh, but actually, when you look at the reality, i.e. the objective factors, they score really well. And I think that's the most interesting area. So, yeah, the next one will be launched, we think, uh, next year.